Hello everybody, this is Arlene. Uh, of course, I just spilled my hot chocolate all over the place, so let me clean this up a little bit here. Hang on. All right. Uh, some of you have been asking some questions um, about, uh, let's see here, about uh, carving. And I know uh, some of you have asked about painting. Painting is not something that most carvers enjoy doing, but we do it because we have to, because it makes our stuff look nicer. So, just to describe, somebody else was saying, well, what do you do about painting? One guy asked about it and asked what I used, and it's very simple. You can go to Walmart, and you can find these small little bottles of, um, let me see if I can... Put that up a little higher here. Hang on just a second here. Um, um, you can buy these little things here, and they're like if you get them on sale, you can get them for 50 cents, otherwise, they're a dollar a piece. I get red, I get uh, black, white. Uh, this is a pumpkin color to do pumpkins or related things, but I usually mix a color for a little bit of burn umber with some red. Hello, Jane. Um, and that works out really well. I have it a little bit darker than normal. Let me see if I can brighten my page up here a little bit. There we go. And what I end up doing is I mix a lot of the red all at one time. The reason is because I do a lot of Santas and I do a lot of um, Cardinals and things. And I use the same red for both. Hello, Nina. Um, and I think uh, people have asked, well, how do you get this color? Well, what I do is I mix my, my red with a little bit of burn umber. This is all acrylic. Uh, this is not, uh, this is a different brand, but these are little ones are all acrylic. They're not very expensive. One little jar will go quite a long ways because what I usually try to do is I try to make my paints in the consistency of whole milk. So I mix it, put probably two coats of the red, the white, the green. You know, usually I, I do it twice. So, and then after I'm done painting these, so a lot of times I'll pre-mix my colors for either the cardinals or, um, well, this is, and the cardinals are basically the same. But... When I mix these, I mix it in a bigger jar, the consistency of, of milk. But every time you use it, you want to make sure you shake it really, really well. And then let it settle for a bit. You don't want a lot of bubbles in it, if you can help it. And then you want to take it out and, um, and you want to do one coat first. Kind of let it dry a little bit. And you can put another coat on top. Now these, uh, these are not difficult to paint. Uh, especially if you use acrylic. One of the little tricks I use is when you carve, uh, you want to make sure that this doesn't bleed into one or the other. If you make that line, that stop cut a little bit deeper, it will help you in keeping it from bleeding from one to the one to the other. So, and oftentimes when I when I carve or when I paint, um, hang on just a second. I still have some of this hot chocolate running down here. Hang on just a second. Um, I kind of knocked it over. But uh, what you want to do is work from the center to your edges. Because if you load your brush too much and you go on the sides here, you're going to bleed a lot of it into the white. Now, a lot of times I'll do the white first, then I'll do the red or vice versa. It really doesn't make any difference. But I like to do um, all these at one time. So I might have 10 of these ready to go. And I'll paint them all the same color red, all the, the same color white. And then the face is actually a mixture of a flesh color with a little bit of, um, I mix a little bit of this red with, a, with the white. And to give it a, or with the flesh tone, to give it a little bit of a rosy cheeks on them. So that works out really, really well. 
um, and I usually put it in and then I, f I feather it out. Uh, the little white dots, you have to make sure if you do this that uh, you, if you're putting a scarf on, you want to put white dots on the hat or whatever, make sure it is completely dry before you do it. Because if you don't, it's going to look like a, a pale uh, color of green or red or whatever you decide to put out. So when you when you carve these, um, you know your and the lips are also the same color as the dark red uh, mix with uh, flesh color. And then I just put a gray or a dark gray for the mouth. Okay, so that's how I do my Santa faces and paint them. Now, if you have a question, feel free to ask uh, about painting. I do put a so it's called a wash. A wash is a little bit thinner than the consistency of milk. It's usually a little bit more uh, runny. And the reason you do that is a lot of times, I showed you the, the cardinal I did before, but a lot of these folks that do cardinal birds will, uh, hello Warren, uh, will do these birds and will do these little lines with a wood burner. And that's what I did my other bird with. But you might end up doing maybe five to five to ten coats of the red to make it cover. The reason they do it so lightly is because if you make it too thick, you're going to clog up all those lines that you try to create with a wood burner. So that's why you want to make sure that if you're... Now, this doesn't make as much difference because this is pretty coarse. I mean, it's not real fine, fine um, carving, I mean, lines in it. So you can go ahead and uh, paint this twice or three times maybe when you do this. And then I usually do uh, the cardinal, I usually do the red as a base coat all the way around. And then I put a little bit of darkness on the feathering and on the tail and then the black, of course, for that portion and then I use a little bit of um, an orange type color um, orangey red for the bill alright so that's how we do the cardinals um, now a lot of people ask well how do you um, hello Mark uh, and Linda how do you antique these well everybody has a different way of antiquing them uh, one thing I always felt that antiquing is puts a final touch to your piece. What it does with the acrylic, it's usually a very bright white, you know, the colors are very vibrant. What the what the antiquing does, it actually mutes that somewhat. It gives it a softer um, color. It's not so brilliant in your face kind of thing. If I had two, sh well actually this was, if this was white and this is antique, you can see that the little crevices here are better than being all white. Now these are castings but this gives you the idea um, what to do. So how do I do my my antiquing. Everybody has a different way of doing it. So the way I do it is, um, hello all the way from Canada. I still hear your clothes. You know, our president says it's your fault with your clothes, but I don't agree with that. <laughs> you guys don't want us up there and I don't blame you. Um, so we're not going to be open anytime soon. Mineral oil, you can buy this right at Walmart. Okay, and what I do is I empty, this is, I think it's, uh, hi Justin, um, I empty about half of this out. Now, because it's mineral oil, what you want to go is to an AC Moore or some kind of art store. You may not be able to find the paint that you need to mix in this for the antiquing. The antiquing, I empty one of these out halfway, and then what I do is I take a tube of burnt umber oil, okay, oil based, not acrylic. Acrylic will not mix with this because it's a water based. You want a oil based paint. 
and it usually comes in a tube. And the tubes, you want once you open up the tube, you'll take out a little strip about an inch long, and you'll drop it in here, and you'll shake the heck out of it because it takes a long time to mix it. Now, what I do a lot of times is I might take a little jar, a little cup, uh, put the one inch strip in it, and then take a little bit of the clear and do it with a brush until it's almost like a, a chocolate color. And then I'll throw it back into the container and then mix it really well. Remember, we're only using half of this container for it. And it should be the consistency of coffee. The, the look of it should be, you should be able to see through it a little bit. But when this sits for a while, you're going to have to shake it up every time you use it. And what I do is I, I have, hello Jim, um, what I end up doing is I take a half of this, I keep the other half for another time, and I mix this stuff up, and I shake it really, really well, and then I pour it out on a, um, on a plate, uh, not a paper plate, because that kind of eats away a little bit, so I'll put it on a regular plate, and what I do is take the brush and I'll make sure that all the little specks are completely dissolved in this stuff, in mineral oil. Once that's completely dissolved, then I load up my, my piece. I just start from head to toe and I just paint it. Now, it look really, really weird when you first do it. Um, if you're a little concerned about it being too dark, you can put a little bit less, make it less, less than coffee, maybe a, a light coffee. Uh, color uh, and then you can do it twice if you want if you're not happy with the way it looks but once you put that in that cuts all that brightness off of your piece and it will really make the 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 uh, all these little lines that you're making it will make things pop out even for this it will cut this white from being bright white to a little more mellow uh, color. And you can do it a couple of times. You can experiment with it. Um, but that's how I do it. Now some people use oh, other stuff like um, oh, let me think here, like tongue oil or um, something like that. I find a lot of that stuff it has an odor to it. It's flammable. This isn't flammable. I had one guy said, well, this isn't safe. And I go, well, yeah, you can drink it if you want. And uh, it says tasteless in it, <laughs> you know. But he he went up and down that this wasn't safe and it wasn't right. And I thought, no, do it.